Greetings, Python coders. This is Alan D. Moore, author of a couple of GUI programming books for Python. But today I am not talking to you about GUI programming. I'm going to talk to you about something a lot more fundamental to Python, and that is classes. Now, a lot of beginners get hung up on the topic of classes. And they're fundamental to so many things in Python, including GUI programming. So I wanted to go over them today and help you get a handle on this feature of Python so that you're not intimidated to work on things that require classes. So the, in this first video, I'm actually going to do a series of videos. In this first video, I'm just going to go over some myths that I've heard repeated on the internet. Um, in videos and articles and posts and other places that keep people from wanting to learn about classes. So let's dive right in. So the first myth is that classes are bad or harmful or should be avoided. Where does this myth come from? Um, so it's like this. Back in the 1990s and 2000s, Object-oriented programming was pretty much the way to do programming. If you weren't doing object-oriented code, nobody was taking you seriously. This was pushed even further by languages like Java and C++ and Objective-C, where pretty much it's all built around the idea of using classes and making objects and following object-oriented design patterns. And... Uh, you know, just like hair metal and bell-bottom jeans, things got more and more extreme and reached a point of being somewhat ridiculous. And suddenly everybody realized how ridiculous it all was, and it started falling out of favor. And so that's where we are now, where object-oriented code has become synonymous with bloated, over-engineered, enterprise-grade, just mush that nobody can understand. And so you'll see a lot of talks, a lot of articles out there being very critical of object-oriented programming. So here's a few of my favorites down here, which I will have links to in the description. Uh, Execution in the Kingdom of Nouns, great article by Steve Yegi. Uh, Stop writing classes. I see this one linked in forum posts all the time. Great talk, but not about what people think it is. Uh, why object-oriented programming is bad. Uh, this is a great spoof right here. FizzBuzz Enterprise Edition. It, hilarious, really. Um, you should check it out. And then, you, you know, you just search object-oriented programming harmful. You'll get all kinds of results, articles, people bashing object-oriented programming. It's pretty clear that, um, you know, object-oriented programming is not gone, but people are definitely very critical of it and very suspicious of it these days. However, as beginners, you guys will see this and you don't understand the context, right? So people who have been writing code for decades, who have been part of these projects that get over-engineered, over-complicated, they're coming from that context of somebody who's seen that and sees how harmful that approach is. Um, but as a beginner, you see those things and you just think, oh, well, classes are bad, right? Um, that's not really the case. Are they really bad? So obviously you need to understand that context of object-oriented programming criticism. It's not that using classes or some of the basic ideas of object-oriented programming are bad. It's that people have taken it too far. They've abused or misused or overused classes, right? Which are just a tool. You can abuse any tool. Okay, you can, you can take it too far. You know, some people take test-driven development too far. Does that mean unit tests are bad? Absolutely not, okay? Um, so yeah, most anti-class discussion is about the abuse or overuse of classes or object-oriented programming. But even if it is bad, just using a class or creating your own class is not the same thing as object-oriented programming. And we'll get into that when we see myth number three. 
And uh, also, classes aren't really avoidable, which we'll see in our next myth. You can use Python without classes. So I've seen people claim online, well, I've been coding Python for n years, and I've never used classes. Well, that's kind of impossible. Because, surprise, everything in Python is a class. What is an integer? It's class int. Okay? What is a string? It's class string. Or we should say an object of class string. Right? What is a print function? It's a class built in function or method. So everything in Python, down to the basic numbers and strings and very simple things, functions, it's all objects built from classes. Everything is a class. All right? Now, some languages like Java or C or C, they have this idea of primitives, which is, you know, just a very simple named chunk of memory where you can stick a value. Python doesn't do primitives. Everything in Python is an object that belongs to a class. That's important to understand. Okay, you say, I get it, I get it, but when I say using classes, I mean building my own classes. That's true, okay? You can use Python rather effectively without building your own classes, but we need to understand that the argument has now changed. We're not saying using classes versus not using classes. What we're saying is classes that I create, that I make for myself, or classes that someone else created for me. So classes are not this extra weirdo bolt-on functionality that is just kind of optional for you to use or not. It's something that's core to Python's design. And, you know, either you can be happy with what other people have created, or you can take that and make your own things and customize them. What's more is that there are things that you simply will not be able to do in Python if you aren't creating classes. Um, most GUI frameworks, including PyQt, um, WXPython, Kivi, I'd say even TKinter to some extent, though if your forms are very simple, you might get away with it. Django, if you want to make web applications with Django, you are definitely creating some classes, okay? If nothing else, you need to create classes for your data models. SQL Alchemy, or really any object relational mapper. What's the first word in object relational mapper? It's object. So you're definitely going to be creating classes there. Um, twisted Framework. If you're doing uh, some serious networking things, you will definitely be creating classes. So if you look at the tutorials for any of these libraries I've mentioned, you're going to see that you'll be creating classes. That's, that's just part of the workflow of those frameworks. So do you absolutely need to create your own classes to use Python? No, of course not. But to do a lot of things in Python that you probably want to do, you will. All right, let's move on. Myth number three, and we talked about this in myth number one a little bit, using classes means you're doing object-oriented programming. Now, there's no formal definition for what constitutes object-oriented programming. But I think most people who practice it would agree it's more than just simply using classes. Um, there's a design philosophy. Um, you know, we talk about these four principles of encapsulation, abstraction, inheritance, polymorphism, and those are all just fancy words to describe ways that you know, we organize our data and our functionality within an object-oriented programming. Now, classes facilitate those things, but classes do not necessarily require those things. And what's more, an object-oriented program typically uses what we call design patterns. And these are things that were built around mainly Java, and um, they're just sort of like cookbook ways of approaching different problems. So, like, creating classes that are factories, creating classes that are proxies, interfaces, abstract classes. These are ways that Java programmers or C++ programmers came up with 
to solve problems using classes, okay? But that doesn't mean that we're necessarily doing object-oriented programming whenever we use classes, okay? And also remember myth number two. If you're doing functional, procedural, or other non-OOP paradigms in Python, you're still using classes because everything's a class. So obviously using classes does not mean we're doing object-oriented programming. Otherwise, there would be no way to do any other type of programming in Python except object-oriented programming. And so this would kind of be moot, all right? The difference is, of course, you're just using classes written by someone else instead of creating your own. Myth number four, classes are only useful for representing tangible, concrete items. I've heard this one a few times. So here's the problem. When people like me create tutorials for people like you to learn about classes, we want to create them using something relatable, right? So we think about things in the real world that tend to model the behavior or the attributes of classes, right? So if you've ever played Dungeons and Dragons or some kind of role-playing game, you know that there are characters and monsters and they have attributes, right? Like hit points and armor class and strength and wisdom and charisma and all those things, right? So we use that as a way to teach class attributes and class methods because that's relatable. When we want to talk about inheritance, we might say, well, let's say class animals, and then dogs are an instance of class animal, and cats are an instance of class animal. That's a great way to teach inheritance. Um, we use games, right? So, you know, a typical video game where you have a player, and the player has a score, and the player has a number of lives. Everyone understands games, right? Well, the result of all that is that a lot of beginners end up thinking of classes as modeling tangible real-world things. Um, and I've heard people say, you know, well, classes aren't really useful unless maybe I was writing a game or something like that. And they don't understand how to use classes in a more abstract situation. But the truth is, the majority of uses of classes are abstract. Now, classes are nouns. They are things, all right? They do describe things, but those things can be abstract as well as concrete. So here's some examples. Data structures, right? Mappings, collections, relational data, models, right? The list is a class. A dict is a class, right? Network connections. Uh, if you're, you're creating sockets, those are a class. Uh, database connections. Anytime you use uh, DB API in Python, you're going to create a connection object. Okay, HTTP sessions, input validators, API interfaces, CPU threads. If you're doing threading, you're going to be using a thread class and creating thread objects. Anything you can give a name to is potentially a class. So here's a short script that I've written that basically downloads a CSV file, writes it to the local hard drive, and then inserts all the data into a SQLite database. This is pretty straightforward and simple. It's not that many lines of Python. And I don't define any custom classes, but I want to show you how classes are used in this script. So in the very first line, we're creating a string object. It's an object of class string, or str. And then we use the request library to get that URL. That returns a response object. So that's a class response that's in part of the request library. Then we check the status code, which is an attribute of the response class. Okay, and if it checks out, we create, we open a new file. And whenever you open a file, that creates a file handle, which is an instance of text IO wrapper. Okay, that's a class that's built into Python. Uh, and it has methods like this write method, which we call on the response. Then we connect to our SQLite database, and this creates a SQLite3.connection object. And that object has a method called cursor, which returns a SQLite3 cursor object. Okay, 
That cursor has methods. We call the execute method here. Again, we open a file. We create a text IO wrapper. Down here, we create a CSV reader object, which is something that can read a CSV file. We then iterate through that reader, and we call the execute, uh, execute method again of our cursor and the commit method of our database connection object. Okay, so you can see, uh, uh, you know, not to belabor the point, we're using classes and objects all over the place in this simple script. And none of them are that concrete of an object, right? A text IO wrapper, what is that? It's not something you can put your hands on, but it is a noun and it's a thing and it's, it's a bit abstract, okay? An HTTP response, not really a, a thing that you can put your hands on. This is where most of the time classes are used is abstract things. All right, our last myth is that classes are hard to understand. Okay, people get hung up on them, so they must be hard to understand. Well, I can't tell you what's going to be hard for you to understand or not. That's subjective. It depends on how your brain works and how you have built up your model of understanding of Python in your head. But what I can say is why I think most beginners get hung up on this. The first problem is that classes tend to solve a problem that beginners don't tend to have. If you're writing... 100 line scripts, 200 line scripts, and you know, you're doing very simple things. You're making some API calls, maybe writing some files, reading some files, doing some arithmetic. Maybe you're doing data analysis with pandas or something like that. You probably don't need custom classes. You're probably not reaching a level of complexity where you need custom classes. As you develop more complicated applications, web apps, GUI apps, things like that, you will probably need classes, okay? There is a learning curve to classes, right? There's a vocabulary that goes along with it. There are conventions that you have to learn, syntax that you have to learn. And classes are often presented to you as something that is extra outside of normal Python that you really don't have to understand if you don't want to. But I hope we see that that's not true, right? But here's the good news. So you already know how to use classes. A lot of the concepts with classes are very simple. They just have different names. So for example, functions that are attached to a class are called methods. They're still just functions, right? Uh, variables that are attached to a class are called attributes. They're still just variables. They hold data, okay? I think once you start thinking of everything in Python as an object, it's more obvious why you would want to create your own types of objects, your own classes. So think about that, mull over that, and I hope, if nothing else, that this prepares you mentally for learning about classes and why you should and why it's worth your time. In the next video, we'll get down to some nuts and bolts. We'll talk about the syntax and the terminology and we'll build our own class. Hope that was helpful to you. Check out links in my description to my books and to other resources. Happy coding and God bless.